and welcome to Crosstalk. I'm Peter Lavelle. They call themselves 9-11 truthers, skeptics, and truth activists. Largely denied access to the mainstream media, their detractors label them as conspiracy theorists and worse. Nonetheless, there's no denying the fact interest remains strong surrounding the events of 9-11. So to try to find out what really happened, I'm joined by Annie Mashon in Dusseldorf. She's a former MI5 officer and now an author and journalist. In London, we pass to Ian Henschel, the author of 9-11 New Evidence and the coordinator of Reinvestigate 9-11 Campaign. And in Philadelphia, we cross to Richard Gage, the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. And another member of our Crosstalk team, Yelena Hunga. All right, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want. I'd like to go to Richard first. I watched your DVD, Blueprint for Truth. Um, and one of the things you keep bringing up is the authenticity of science. Now, would you show that DVD to, like, Scientific American or Popular Mechanics? Would they pass it for you? Would they give you good marks? Uh, if they're watching it with integrity, you bet they will. In fact, we've given this presentation to over 140 audiences worldwide, and by a show of hands, those who didn't agree with us beforehand almost universally agree with us that these three World Trade Center skyscrapers were brought down by explosive demolition on 9-11, not by fire and jet plane impacts. And this includes architects and engineers uh, for which we have now over 1,000 signed on to our petition demanding a new investigation of Congress. Okay, but Richard, doesn't it get down to our scientists versus their scientists? I mean, one of the things I'm trying to get at here is that it's really pitched to a scientific community, and if you guys are all arguing among yourselves, how is a, a general person like myself, I'm not a scientist, then who do I believe? Because a lot of scientists say, this is all rubbish. Indeed. When you look at the evidence, it's very, very clear. Anybody, not just scientists, not just architects and engineers, but most people who've seen a, an implosion, a controlled demolition of a skyscraper before on TV, like the old hotels in Las Vegas, uh, this is exactly how Building 7 comes down, straight down, uniformly, into its own footprint, defying the laws of physics, if we, be, if we believe the story that we're told from NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Uh, this building can't convert all of its gravitational potential into kinetic energy and fall at free fall speed and do any other work, like crushing the 40,000 tons of structural steel in the way. This is pure science, pure physics. Nobody can argue with it. Okay, Ian, if I can go to you, is, is it just pure physics? It's, of course it's not. It's a lot of politics involved, too. I mean, people that, that, that distrust the 9-11 Commission are called conspiracy theorists, are called crazy. I mean, where is their voice? Because certainly in the mainstream in the United States, it's basically taboo to talk about it. What's wrong with questioning? And this is really what this well, program exactly. is all about. Well, that's right. You know, most of what we have to deal with is not argument, but smears name-calling, you've got the four great techniques, you know, of the Stalinist, of people who aren't interested in the truth. Name-calling, that means saying we're conspiracy theorists. Guilt by association, oh, you know, we found somebody who's a Holocaust denier in their movement, so therefore you shouldn't ever listen to anything they say. Straw man arguments, oh, are you saying George Bush blew up the tra World Trade Center. No, we're not saying that. That's a straw man argument. And then whispering, probably the nastiest of all are the whispering campaigns, where they go to people in the media and they say, hey, guys, you shouldn't let these people on, you know, they're, they're dodgy, you'll get into trouble. Um, that's, a, that's a whispering campaign. So that's what we're up against. They won't debate. You know, you cannot get them to come on. I think you tried to get someone to come onto this program. Well, that's absolutely they won't true. Debate. We, we, did try, we did try to get other people to come on, but they said they do not talk with conspiracy theorists. And we, in this, program, what, this. Is it, this program, we said that we wanted to talk about questions that have been risen in the public sphere. They did not want to debate. I'm sorry, go ahead. I mean, you can they're continue. The conspiracy th yeah, they, they are the conspiracy theorists. Conspiracy theory, if it means anything, is a simple story which, you know, claims to explain a major complicated event. That is exactly what the official story of the 9-11 uh, attacks is. Very simple story. All, all organized by a guy in a cave with 17 hijackers who were just incredibly lucky. You could not get more of a conspiracy theory than that. And, you know... 
I think it is valid to use that phrase, but you have to then recognize that the official story is the conspiracy theory, and we're the sort of ordinary guys who are just trying to say that things aren't, we don't think it's that simple, and we think maybe these guys were encouraged or a way was cleared for them, and there's a lot of evidence it was, you know, the paper trail. Okay, but a lot of, if I go to Annie right now, I mean, then who did pull this off? Would you like to name a name, an organization, and the motivation for doing it? Because if it was a planned demolition, then there's a lot of politics behind that. That was a lot of work to pull that operation off. Who's behind it? Well, this is what nobody on the planet appears to know at the moment. We have had a 9-11 Truth Commission in the US, but even the chairs of that commission, Keenan Hamilton, have said that they were set up to fail. So even they admit that they haven't got to the root cause of what happened on 9-11. So um, what this 9-11 Truth movement, which is a global movement of millions of concerned citizens, as well as many, many professional people with expertise in the relevant fields, are asking for, is a new independent and impartial um, and also potentially international inquiry to get to the root of this. And I think it's uh, very relevant. I mean, it continues to affect all of us around the planet to this day because we're looking at an event, the key event, that is still referred to continually by our politicians and our governments that is used to justify the ongoing wars in the Middle East and the war on terror and also to justify the erosion of all our individual freedoms in our countries. So it's a very... Um, important issue. It continues to be an issue of great relevance, but I don't think anyone can say, hand on heart, that we know who actually committed it. You know, one of the things that I found very odd in looking at the 9-11 Commission report is that it's quite sloppy, and, and I'm not an expert in the field, but uh, there's a lot of things I've read that say they seem to not be wanting to talk about that or move over things very quickly, uh, like building number seven and things like that. But then you have this operation of amazing, sophistic amazing sophistication. How can we have both simultaneously? Because it's like Keystone Cops and James Bond. If I could go back to Ian, I mean, how do we square that? Well, um, they didn't really need to provide a, a good story at the 9-11 Commission because, you know, they, they, they knew that the American media would just publish anything they say as being the truth. And they don't really care about the fringe. Um, they, they don't care about the 30% of people who don't believe the official story so long as they can trust the American mainstream media to go on pumping out, you know, what they're saying. Um, I think one th point I would just like to make is Richard's done fantastic work on the collapse of the towers, but there is a lot of other very, very worrying evidence that this could have been some sort of an inside job um, from the paper trail. Um, and, you know, I've, a lot of us have done a lot of work on that. It doesn't go over very well on the Internet because the Internet likes, you know, simple stories and simple pictures and things. But, you know, we've, some of us have really dug away and we've read all the fine print of the uh, official reports and so on. And it's amazing how many lies they did tell. And I'm not saying that as so-called a conspiracy theorist. I'm saying that as somebody who's just following the evidence that they have since produced. Could I just mention three huge lies that they told at the time of 9-11, which can now be debunked on the basis of evidence that's come forward from official sources? Do, would you mind Go right ahead. just bearing with me? Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, the first lie was the CIA didn't have any contacts in Afghanistan. Actually, the CIA had a so super secret Osama bin Laden unit with 80 CIA officers working in it. That probably means maybe 500 people if you include the ancillary staff. There was almost a mini CIA working on Osama bin Laden, um, either running him as an agent or attemptedly monitoring him, although they didn't do a very good job of that. Um, that's the first whopper of a lie. The next one is that they were taken by surprise. Totally not true. George Bush was warned of pr almost exactly what might happen in August of 2001. No action was taken. Um, we'd like to know, you know, there's definitely, beyond any doubt, gross incompetence. Um, third lie, it was all an intelligence failure. Again, not true. The FBI was prevented by those guys in the CIA from investigating the hijackers. They had identified some of the alleged hijackers prior to 9-11. They, they, they went to the CIA. This is all on the record. You know, I'm not speculating. It's all on the official record now. The media haven't noticed because the media aren't interested. Um, but they went to the um, CIA and they said, we'd like some information on these guys. They had the legal right to demand it as well. The CIA said, no, 
you know, we're not telling you anything. There was nearly a punch up. Okay. You know, that's how bad it was. Okay, I'd like to go back to Richard. I mean, again, you know, scientists versus scientists. We'll go back to politics in a second, but why is the establishment sure. in the United States and the worldwide wanting to debunk you so quickly? Um, like I said, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a scientist, so I can't judge with authenticity if you're just giving me a snow job, but it's certainly. The, the establishment could, but th they won't engage you or they just completely dismiss you. They call you a fraud. I mean, what is it? Why can't well, the scientists sit down and say, no, you got that wrong, you got this right, etc., etc.? Why can't we see that happen? Those who have something to hide cannot afford to come out and uh, give us a forum to present our evidence, although the Washington Times did a very good job of that. Um, so we're presenting our evidence directly to the American people, directly to Congress. We've given now uh, our petition with 1,000 architect and engineer petition signers demanding a new investigation to every member of Congress. Uh, we're also calling for Eric Holder, Attorney General of the United States, to impanel a federal grand jury to investigate NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology, uh, specifically uh, Sham Sunder, uh, project leader and his co-project leader, M John Gross. Uh, these individuals are responsible for a uh, cover-up, uh, speaking about uh, uh, fabrications and unscientific reports. Uh, the NIST reports for b both of, all three of these buildings, these three skyscrapers, is full of, uh, uh, of, of incredible uh, uh, misinformation and uh, omissions and unscientific Okay, uh, Richard, if I, if I could interrupt uh, you there, instance, we're going to uh, go to a short break, but when we return, we'll continue our discussion on the controversy surrounding 9-11. Stay with our team. meetfriends.rt.com Talk. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing whether the people have been denied the truth about 9-11 or whether conspiracy theorists are just turning this tragedy into an industry. But before, let's see what Russians think about the issue. 9-11, two numbers that shook the world. On the 11th of September 2001, Al-Qaeda hijackers seized four passenger airliners and used them to commit massive acts of terror, killing thousands of innocent people in New York City, the state of Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. That is the official version. However, doubts and conspiracy theories explaining this tragedy and its aftermath are plentiful. The U.S. responded to the attacks by launching military operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. The Russian Public Opinion Center asked what Russians see as the real reason behind the operations. 72% believe Washington's real goal is to strengthen its position by more aggressively exporting and enforcing its worldview. 18% think the U.S. aim is to strike against international terror networks, a point of view held mostly by young Russians, while the older generation remains more skeptical of U.S. intentions. Either way, the legacy of 9-11 will be argued over by those who accept the official version of modern history and those who do not. Back to you, Peter. Okay, Annie, I'd like to go to you. Now, let's assume Richard's right. 